for me, it's like, wow, we just created this perfect thing. Like, just leave it alone. Like, walk, step away. Anything you attempt to do is only going to tarnish the kind of like reputation of and legacy of the show. So I'm very skeptical that there will be anything done with the office or that anyone is going to go back and approach it in any way, shape or form. But maybe an office movie could be fun, an office road trip movie. Hey, this is Stephen from Pop Culture, and today I am chatting with Mr. Rain Wilson. Uh, 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 we are here to talk about an awesome new podcast uh, that, that, well, it's not a new podcast, it's been around for a while. It's a new season of the podcast, uh, Radio Rental. Um, um, and you are the host and the narrator. Uh, for, for our fans out there who, who are maybe not super familiar, could you give us a little background on the show and, and, and all that? Yeah, sure. So Radio Rental is uh, essentially true stories of the weird, um, the macabre, um, the, the mystical, the uh, filled with uh, horror and uh, strange coincidence. They're like little Twilight Zone episodes, but they actually happened to real people. And they draw out these people's stories and they're uh, just... Um, they're fascinating, horrifying, astounding, stupefying, uh, spine tingling. And um, I've been really lucky to be a part of it from the beginning, just as the playing my character, Terry Carnation, um, who is, you know, a, a, a late night uh, uh, paranormal radio disc jockey. And in this circumstance, the owner and host of a uh, a video rental store, somewhat lost in the past video rental store. And the stories are, are basically the VHS tapes that he puts into the machine each, each episode. Mm -hmm. And, and it's really interesting too, because Terry is very much a, a crypt keeper style character, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which I very much enjoy about, about Terry. Uh, uh, what was, was that an exciting aspect of it for you? I mean, did you, did you grow up kind of watching like, like uh, uh, the horror host genre of, of, of television? And was this an exciting opportunity for you in that regard? Sure. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I loved all of those horror stories. I remember the crypt keeper very well. I, I can go back to, you know, watching Vincent Price. Yeah. Um, and um, what's her name? Now I'm blanking on her name. Maybe Elvira? Elvira. Elvira. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She was uh, yeah. such a part of our, uh, of our mythology in suburban Seattle in the 80s. Um, yeah. So I, I love that stuff. So it's super fun to be a part of that. You know, the, 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 the strange character that has a, a very particular point of view and is the, uh, you know, has the, uh, opens the doors to the, the mysterious. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. Really, really fun. Do you, uh, do you ever, uh, hear, hear one of the stories or, or one of the stories come your way and, and you're like looking at it and you're like, Oh my gosh, this is like genuinely freaking me out. <laughs> yeah. The, um, there have been so many stories. I'm, I'm not thinking of specific ones right now, but, uh, through the radio rental universe, I've heard so many, um, and they're just, they're just astounding, you know, and you, you, you know, the person is telling the truth, but, uh, you don't know exactly what happened. Um, it's, 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 it's really cool. And it just shows you, you know, just like Hamlet says to Horatio, there is more on heaven and earth Horatio than is dreamt of in your philosophy. Uh, I feel like that uh, happens each episode of Radio Rental. It it, it very much does. Um, uh, I, I've listened to a few episodes. I've listened to several episodes uh, myself already. And uh, I listened to the first episode of the new season, which. Oh, great. Launched, I haven't I, even heard that. They yes. gave it to you. They haven't even given it to me. It's up already. You can go listen to it. It's, it's Oh, is it, it up now? Yeah, it's now. It's. Uh, April, it was April 29th, Friday, April 29th was the, the debut date. And I already wow. listened to it. And um, it's very interesting. It's, it's very, um, uh, we'll say crime leaning. Okay. Uh, more so than sort of like 
supernatural. Supernatural, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is like almost scarier, maybe. Yeah. Okay. You think like aren't aren't the aren't the like the ones that feel most true more terrifying? Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> they are. Some of some of them you're like, oh wow, that that could absolutely happen to me. <laughs> it's very freaky. Yeah. Have yeah. have you ever had any kind of bizarre happenstance, you know, that that comes to your mind when you think about this show? Oh, wow. Let me think about that bizarre happenstance. I'm sure my life is riddled with bizarre <laughs> happenstance. Fair enough. Um, but um, no, I, you know, I was just talking to a friend of mine and uh, he, there was a, and we were talking about psychics and he had met with this psychic. This didn't happen to me, but I, I just, it sparked this story. Yeah. And he was, uh, he has been working as a uh, background actor on TV commercials because it pays pretty well. You're in the background of TV commercials and um, you make a nice living and get some health care. And, uh, but he had met with a psychic and she said, I see something with the letter A. And he's like, she's like, do you have anyone close to you with letter A? And he's like, no, you know, brother, cousin, relative. No, no. She's like, wow, I'm just getting the strongest impulse of the letter A. It's like, I really don't know. The next day, or maybe two days later, he goes to do a background on a commercial for an auction house, like Sotheby's, something like that. And they're having the background people carry out weird things on the stage, like a stuffed giraffe or a, you know, a suit of armor or, you know, weird things as part of the comedy of the commercial. And they're like, here, they say to him, why don't, uh, why don't you hold this? And they hand him a giant letter A. And he spends the entire day, the entire day, eight hours holding a giant red letter A um, as part of his day. So, coincidence? That's pretty, yeah. Uh, or serendipity? I don't know. Maybe that's not appropriate. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That yeah. is pretty wild. I, I remember, you know, I, I was listening to the, the podcast and I was trying to think of like in my own life, like, did I ever have any kind of weird instances like that? I remember once as a, as a kid riding on the school bus and we were about to turn the corner at the edge of this large field. And mm -hmm. uh, I was looking out the window and I saw this person, this man, I think, standing in all white, just wearing like white. He was just standing on the edge and we turned the corner and my view, you know, was blocked just because it's a bus, you know, whatever. My view became blocked briefly. And when we got around the side, he wasn't there. He was gone. And I was like, maybe I've just, in all these years, I'm like, well, maybe I just imagined it. I was a child. But, you know, at the mm -hmm. time, I remember thinking to myself, like, there's nowhere for anyone to go that I yeah. wouldn't see them. Like, it's a giant field. And uh, listening to this kind of sparked that memory for me. I yeah yeah no had anyone like died in your life were there any recent like uh passings i don't your, i don't remember at the time? i, I yeah. was i was an adult before you know i really started losing like you know older family members and things like that yeah. so i really yeah. don't i don't recall anything like that happening at the time mm. and and i've mm. never really spoken to like a you know, uh, uh, a psychic or, or someone otherworldly, you know, someone in connection with the otherworldly elements I, I, I about it. I just, it just was a, a strange uh, happenstance at the time. And I just kind of, I guess, brushed it aside all these years. But now mm. listening to Radio Rental, I'm like, maybe there was something to it. <laughs> so Radio you know, Rental, what we're saying, it's therapeutic. It is, yeah. In and addition it, to the entertainment. For all the listeners, it's going to bring up those stories. Yep. Those coincidences, oh. those mysterious happenings, paranormal memories, they're going to come flooding back. Yep. All of them. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Rain, while, while I've got you, I, I, if it's okay, I'd like to ask about your 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 other new project you have coming out. It's Dark Winds on AMC. Okay. I, I, yep. just, I literally just watched the trailer for it. And what mm. a deeply compelling uh, uh, visual that was. Um, can you say anything about that or, or tell us about, you know, your, yeah, role? sure. 
Sure. Uh, Dark Winds comes out in uh, early June, and it's a six-part series um, set on the Navajo Reservation from the great Tony Hillerman set of novels. They're murder mysteries set in the 70s, so it's a great kind of period, period on the res kind of stories. Um, amazing, amazing actors, and uh, it's uh, it's it's absolutely uh, it's fantastic. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Um, another thing that you have coming out, I- I'm also very excited. I'm just excited about everything you're doing, Rain. Oh, you're so is, is nice. you are playing the incredible Doctor Demento in. Weird Al's biopic film. Uh, uh, I, I guess biopic film is the right word. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. all right. Um, it's a send up. It's almost like airplane sent up disaster movies. Okay. Well, weird. The Al Yankovic story kind of sends up music biopics. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but that's that's the genre. It's uh, super fun. Was that an was that an exciting role to get? Like I, I my my dad, you know, showed me Doctor Demento at a young age. Like I, I've grown up on all. Oh of sure. That. So so I just I I imagine that had to be like a very exciting thing for you. Oh yeah, I I used to I grew up and like it was I think it was Sunday nights. Um, I grew up in Seattle and then later we moved to Chicago. Like it was always like, hello there, it's Doctor Demento, and uh, you would just hear stuff. I mean, you would hear like ridiculous polka music but you'd also hear frank zappa and and like horror music weird horror music and um soundtracks and it was just really mind-blowing because at the time radio was so limited too you know what i mean like 70s 80s radio was just you had your classic rock station your pop station your classical station that was it you didn't hear anything out of the box now you can listen to anything anytime you just hit a button and you can hear anything, but uh, Doctor Demento was crucial and and crucial in launching launching Weird Al Yankovic onto the world. And he, we have a remarkable 30, 40 year legacy of of Weird Al. Thank God, um, making the world a better place. Oh, man, I couldn't agree more, hundred uh, yeah. uh, percent. And 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 I want to ask you one more question before our time is up. Uh, yeah. uh, ask uh, about the office if that's okay. I'm sure you get tons of questions. I don't want to come with the traditional like uh, revival or a reboot or blah blah blah. You know, all that's tired and old. Yeah. Uh, but but what I would like to ask is, the older you get, do you feel any less compelled to return what? to the character of Dwight? Wait a second. You're calling me old here? No, no, is no. That no, like no. A, that's me, a backhanded way of commenting on my age. I'm going to have them delete this I'm part. 37, I'm 37, Stephen. I'm, 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 I'm 30. also 37. Um, Look, so Rain, much we have in common. I, but I would, I would easily pass for like 53. Look at this. There's no way. <laughs> and I would pass for 27. <laughs> but I suppose what I mean is the further away you get from sort of the finality of the end of the show and, mm-hmm. and all that it did, I mean, do you, do you feel a need or a desire or a compelling, or do you just feel like, you know, I, I feel like I'm happy with the way that that character closed. You know, uh, we've spoken here and there about like, would it be fun to do something with Dwight? I don't know about like anything in Dunder Mifflin land, but, you know, and I just, I just keep thinking, you know, it would be really fun, but at the same time, the office is like this perfect gem, you know, 200 episodes, granted, maybe there's a dozen that weren't so great, but the, the greatness of the show in totality is uh, extraordinary and it holds up. It has new legions of fans. I just talked to my friend in Iceland. His nine-year-old daughter in the back seat of his car in Iceland has watched the show five times. In Iceland! Like, what? You know, it has an international appeal. And I guess for, for me, it's like, wow, we just created this perfect thing. Like, just leave it alone. Like, walk, step away. Anything you attempt to do is only going to tarnish the kind of, like, reputation of and legacy of the show so 
I'm very skeptical that there will be anything done with the office or that anyone is going to go back and approach it in any way, shape or form. But maybe an office movie could be fun, an office road trip movie, you know. Love that idea. Everyone's um, driving across the country to go to Creed's funeral. (laughs) Um, At the last moment, it turns out he's not dead, pops out of his coffin. Then we combine with Walking Dead with a Walking Dead spinoff series. Dwight versus zombies. Everyone has wanted to see Dwight versus zombies from the get go. So there's a world of possibility out there. I'm offended we haven't gotten Dwight versus zombies yet. <laughs> Rain, thank you so, so much for the opportunity to chat today. I really appreciate it. Uh, Radio Rental uh, from Tinderfoot is out right now. Um, um, it's, it's wherever podcasts are streaming. Um, and the, the, the new season just dropped. And, and you've got so much else going on that I'm going to let you go because you're a busy man. <laughs> 